Welcome to the April 28th, 2021 Parks and Recreation Commission meeting. This is a teleconference meeting with commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating remotely to ensure proper social distancing in this federal, state, and local emergency. I would like to introduce the staff and commission members present. Commissioners present include myself, Chair Bas Jennifer Baskin, um, Commissioner Christopher Harris, Commissioner Mark Bryman, Commissioner Peter Diepenbrock, Commissioner Dana Payne, uh, Vice Chair Sarah Staley Shank, uh, Library and Community Services Director Sean Reinhardt, and Assistant Director uh, Nick Segeda. Am I saying it correctly? Segda, but that was a noble effort. Thank you. <laughs> um, under public comment, the public may address the commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. Please clearly state your name, address, or political jurisdiction in which you live. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up un under public comment other than to provide general information. Nick, do we have any public comment? We do. Uh, if you wanna make public comment, please in, uh, engage that raise hand feature on uh, the bottom of your Zoom screen. If you're dialing in uh, by phone and participating by phone, uh, press star nine. Uh, we have uh, a public comment, a hand raised from Julie Shanson. Go ahead, Julie. I'm gonna unmute myself. Did that work? Can you hear me now? We can. Excellent. So um, I wanna apologize. Uh, I have multiple meetings scheduled this evening, so I am speaking about something that's on the agenda, but I wanted to thank the Parks and Recreation Commission for the work that they did on Carl E. Clark Park. Uh, Commissioner Harris, I really appreciate the photo that's behind you. It's lovely. Um, and uh, I like yours too, Commissioner Shank. <laughs> Everybody else, you gotta you gotta pick up your game. No, I'm I'm talking that um, we have been. Uh, it has been difficult to uh, stay connected with the members of Mr. Clark's family in order to get final approval on some of the text on the storyboard. So I wanted to. Uh, just make that clear and ask for a little bit of your patience. The, uh, the design is wonderful and we are just hoping that we could put some um, dates and captions on some of the photos. So uh, Nick, I, I left you a message about this today and so hopefully we can connect offline, but I wanted to give the commission a heads up and I wanted to thank you. Thank you all for all the work we did on this. It's been phenomenal having, uh, being able to tell folks to go to the Carl Clark Park. Uh, there's a bus st station there. There's a bus stop there. Um, it's been excellent to have this resource in the neighborhood. So thank you. And also um, we are connecting with the family to make sure that everything's okay with them. And so wanted to ask for your patience. Thank you, Julie. Nick, do we have any other public comment? Um, Julie, did you have something else that you wanted to say? You've got your hand up again. Nope, I guess I need remedial okay. Zoom lessons. Thank you okay. all. Thank you very much, Commission. Good evening, goodbye. No worries. Uh, again, if you would like to make co public comment on any item that's not on the agenda at this time, uh, please engage that raise hand feature uh, at the bottom of your Zoom screen, or if you're dialing in, uh, press star nine, which will raise your virtual hand. Well, I guess they're all virtual hands. And I don't see any other public comment. Okay. Well, then we can move on to uh, presentations. Uh, D1 will be the city council liaison report. And we are very fortunate to have uh, Mayor Drew Combs uh, attending here with a presentation and, and um, 
some time here spent with our commission. So thank you. Yes, and if I may, Madam Chair, I, I note that um, City Manager Starla Jerome Robinson also was in attendance, so we may we may want to bring her in as a panelist as, as well. Oh, fantastic. Not sure whose timer that is. Oh, that's my timer. Sorry. Hey, thank, thanks, uh, Chair Baskin, for, for the introduction. Should I just launch in or is, is that OK? That would uh, be great. Cool. Yeah, I, I think the uh, agendizing this as a presentation makes it seem a lot more formal than, than it is. But, uh, but really happy to be the, uh, the, the city council liaison to the Parks and Rec Commission. I know uh, Councilmember Mueller was, I think, the liaison for, for a, a couple of years. And so, so happy to be, be taking, um, you, you know, taking that over and, and certainly see this, this presentation as an introduction to, to me. Uh, for, for those I haven't had extensive interaction with um, in the past, I know certainly a couple of you I, I have. Um, and, and, and also, uh, you know, a dialogue about what, what my priorities are and, and, and to learn more about what, what your priorities are. Um, you know, I think, I don't know if you um, uh, uh, um, read the, uh, the almanacs, of course, I'm so sorry, you might have my kids in the background. Uh, uh, um, you know, the almanac uh, every year with the moon there does a, a sort of a, 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 an, an article about sort of what, what's your agenda, what's your priorities. And, and, you know, for mine, it was really about like sort of the basic things that a community of this size does, like, right? And, and, and a lot of that has to do with, with those, those services that it, it provides to its residents, whether it has to do with, with planning and community development, or whether it has to do with, um, you know, um, providing roads, right? Uh, and, 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 and things associated with, with, with recreation, right? And, 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 and parks and rec, and I really see that as like, one of the, the fundamental things that, um, you know, again, a community our, our size, the government does for, for, for its, its residents. And so for me, it's, it is really important. And I think of anything that, that has been heightened by, by the pandemic, as, as we've seen, like, you know, really um, the, the, the value of, of, of first some of those, that programming that has gone away, right, because of the pandemic. And then the, the value of that, that infrastructure that, that, that exists, right, that, that is there. Um, and that has been really um, uh, an important lever for, for, for many people in our, our community during, during this time. Um, so I, I always joke when I, when I talk about my, my time as, 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 as mayor, I remember uh, not too long after getting elected to council, having a, a conversation with Hayward Robinson, a former mayor and council member, and he's like, you know, it's like you'll have all these plans, but you know, you never actually know what you're going to get when you're when you're uh, when you're mayor. And certainly, um, I could have never imagined a, a pandemic, a global pandemic, as, as during my, my time as mayor. And so, so that has like really um, um, altered some of what I saw as 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 my my priorities when when I ran. But one has not that hasn't changed is again going back to this this idea of of our our sort of our parks and recreation infrastructure. And, and it's important and, and obviously the the sort of the shining example of that is is, is all of the, the work um, and effort being uh, devoted to, to the Menlo Park Community Center right that, that's being uh, constructed in the Bellhaven neighborhood I mean it, um, it, it it really I think when you look at sort of the level of the city staff that's engaged in that directly on a day-to-day -day basis even all, all the way obviously up to, to the city manager, I think it, it, it really sort of uh, emphasizes how important that project is um, to, to, the, to the city, getting it completed, getting it right, um, um, and, and having it really be like a, a special place for, for, for the community. One of the things that certainly that is um, uh, uh, partly a result of a, a, a donation from, from Facebook, uh, but but the city is bringing monies to the table, extensive amounts of monies, uh, specifically connected to um, um, the the our, our a large portion of it certainly connected to to, to the new pool and and the council uh, some months ago uh, voted to draw down additional Measure T funds 
uh, um, to to cover the city's contribution of, of that, that that new complex. Um, there, there are additional sort of Measure T funds to be drawn down that can be drawn down, um, and it's 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 my goal that that we draw them down to then address some some other uh, uh, park and recreation needs through, throughout the city. Uh, one of the things again now in Menlo Park we're fully in in district elections, right, and and are in a district reality, shall I say? And 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 I like to point out that my my district, the second district. <laughs> as my only has only has one park right and in and over the past uh, uh 20 years uh, of the 40 million dollars in measure t and and uh, now defunct community development agency funds that have been spent by the city um on parking uh, park and recreation infrastructure only about four hundred thousand dollars has gone to the one park in in my in my district, and that's the Willow Oaks Park, and that 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 was connected to the um, uh, to sort of resurfacing and redesigning the uh, the field, uh, which is actually not city property; it's part of the Ravenswood School District. You really learn all of these these really sort of um, uh, uh, weird things in in city government, like where sewer lines are and. and where water comes from and what exactly is the, the city, um, the city border and what what, what is not, um, all, all those things that in normal civilian life you just don't don't think about but become like really important, and so it, it is important to me and and I, I know as part of the the parks uh, Eric master plan there there has been, you okay little guy, <laughs> um, there there has been plans uh, to to redo the park at at restroom facilities. Uh, redo the play structure, and so it's it's a priority for me that we draw down additional Measure T funds to to get that really th that that project kicked off. It's it's also um, a, a priority. Another, <laughs> it's, um, it, it's also uh, 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 another uh, another project is is redoing the the play structure at at uh, in Fergus. Again, really getting that, those those projects. Um, again, as, as you guys know, the Milan uh, structure, these things uh, take a long time. <laughs> um, but uh, and, and so um, and, and so, I certainly don't have any delusions that that this is something that's going to be turned around immediately. But but I, I really do want to to get a, a full commitment from a majority of, of, of the city council. That, that these are priorities and, and really get the uh, uh, it lined up regarding the, the funds that we'll, we'll need to 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 uh, to get those complete. So that those uh, I, I probably talked way too long, <laughs> but that that's uh, for me. Um, and, and so that's why for me it's really exciting to be be the liaison to to the Parks and Rec uh, Commission. I, I think I think in the 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 years ahead we're going to be doing really exciting things um, uh, when it comes to like I say. Our, our parks and rec infrastructure and um, just sort of new. And, and then again, obviously um, going back to, to, to the theme of, of the pandemic, we will have some really sort of critical decisions to make about like when it comes to parks and rec, what the city wants to do, like what, what it wants to prioritize as we come back. And are there some services where, um, Maybe it's not the, the the most ideal scenario for um, uh, for 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 the city or for city staff to be to be the front line in providing those services. Um, and I'm not trying to sort of predict where the city council is on that, but I do think again, like um, that pandemic provides us an opportunity to really have that discussion um, about like uh, are we doing when it comes to the services we provide. Are are we are we the best to provide those those services? And in some cases, the answer may be yes, 100%. We're we're the best, but I, I think we have to be open to the discussion that that maybe in some cases we're we're not. And and so um, and and so I, again, like I said, I think that'll be an important part of the discussion um, in, in in the months ahead. So with that, I am again happy to to to, to provide for further uh, um, you know. Um, you know, further information or answer any questions you may have. <laughs> and my son will answer any questions too. Thank you. I'm sure the commission um, has some questions. I, I guess at this point, um, I will open it up to public comment if there is any public comment on this um, item. 
or for Mayor Combs. If you have a comment you'd like to make, please engage that raise hand function at the bottom of your screen, or if you're dialing in by phone, please press star nine so that uh, we can see you and recognize you. Do not see any public comment. Um, well, thanks again, um, Mayor Combs. I guess uh, one question I had um, is kind of just around, it, it's a bit more about the um, community engagement and um, the feeling of like one Menlo Park, which we've always been striving to achieve through what we've done in terms of accessibility and sustainability and um, making sure that we're um, maintaining and um, you know, bringing satisfaction to all parts of Menlo Park. But what kind of struck me, and of course this is a result of the pandemic and what's been going on is kind of our, our downtown area seemed really sort of depressed and we see a lot of vacancies and we just don't see people kind of collaborating. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really happy about what the restaurants have done out there and kind of the use of the um, street space there, but just kind of wondering, are there any plans to kind of, you know, work with either public or private partnerships to sort of make that downtown revived again um, through the reopening process? Yeah, so I, I, I think um, um, that's a, a obviously an observation that that that, that we've all all made i, I mean um you, you know, downtown has had there have certainly been some bright spots but there certainly have been some challenges and in in many respects it it's been um sort of exacerbated by by the pandemic and and there, there are, are just lots of you know sort of just really fundamental and, and structural challenges there um uh one again a number of the properties are, are held by family trusts right and 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 uh are, are paying sort of reduced property taxes and so so there isn't as much that pressure um to really sort of monetize or exploit those the, uh, the, those properties for um uh, uh, uh you know for what could be their, their their highest sort of market value and and so we have had scenarios where again um um uh, retail space have been on on the market for for a long time in some cases it's it's because like I, having had those discussions it's, it's, it's the landowner is, is, is asking like an outrageous <laughs> sum of money and and it is in a position too right because maybe there's no mortgage and there's no like, sort of very immediate pressure to to sort of turn that round uh, and and so and so so that that has been um, I, I think a, a, a challenge certainly part of the the downtown specific plan was to sort of really uh, spark um, um, uh, you, you know revitalization of Santa Cruz and, and El Camino. And we certainly have seen that with regards to, to, to El Camino. We haven't seen it as much with, with, with Santa Cruz. Again, part of it goes to, to, to um, uh, partly, uh, like I said, the ownership of the properties. P partly, I do think that, again, there have been challenges in relation to the parking, right, and the redevelopment and, 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 and the parking that's required and, and how you deliver the parking. And that certainly is something I, I think that like will, will be will be on, on the table and in the future as, as, as we look for different levels we can pull. Um, and and so and so that that's sort of kind of the, the business development kind of angle. And 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 I know and, and I know the city manager can talk to this. We we maybe haven't had that sort of business development expertise muscle in the city government as we've had in, in the past. But I, I know that the plan is to is to to bring that expertise back. So you really do have someone that's on the ground promoting the city to, to businesses, um, um, specifically to, to, to retail businesses. And, and, and so the hope is that that that, that will Will, um, will will be a key part of part of the change, and then the other issue is just the aesthetics, right? I mean, it definitely kind of has like a 1970s film <laughs> at its spots with the, and I know that that's something that that uh, Council Member Mueller has really taken on um, as as one of his priorities, right? To really sort of engage and look at ways in which um, we can can make certain tweaks that to, to, to really sort of. Um, makes some of the hardscape elements of, of downtown look look nicer and, and maybe in, in ways and in, in 
again, like Menlo Park, we, we sort of love our public engagement. It has lots of value. Um, it, it is a, a long and drawn out and tiring process. And so, and so sometimes I, I think that, um, you, you know, I, I think, think one of the things certainly that, that Council Member Mueller is, is focused on are some of these small tweaks like that we can do, right? That, that maybe, you know, not that, again, public engagement is not important. It is very important. But, but certainly some things that, that we can do that isn't going to, that, that won't sort of spark this, this massive sort of process, right, um, that, that then um, becomes a life on its own and, 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 and you know, again, and, and then and three or four years later, it's actually sort of delivering. And so, but, but all to say that, like, yeah, I mean, it, 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 is, it is a concern and, and it is a priority. And, and hopefully, like I said, we are, we are going to be sort of, you know, taking these small steps to, 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 to address it. And, and happy if, if there's anything that the city manager wants to, to, to add on that point. Well, I, I think I'll just throw in there that it, it's both a professional and personal uh, goal for me. I, we have brought in some community development, uh, economic development expertise, but I think we need more than what we've got right now. So we're, we're working on a couple of market analysis uh, projects to determine what type of retail or what type of business would be successful downtown. I mean, it's not just the pandemic, it is that retail and what's important to people in the downtown area has changed remarkably in the last 10 years. And so we really have two challenges or at least two, uh, and that is one aging infrastructure and what's the future look like. But on the bright side, we will have more people living close to the downtown area. We haven't, we haven't had many projects approved, if any, for Santa Cruz Avenue itself under the specific plan, but we've had a number of projects on El Camino, including Springline and the Stanford project, which will in total bring 1,000 to 1,500 more people living on El Camino in the downtown area. So, uh, but we, we do continue to work on it and try and come up with pilot pro projects and opportunities for improvement. But it's, it's hard. I mean, if you look at the closure of Santa Cruz, uh, you know, it's 50-50. Some people love it. Some people hate it. <laughs> it's just not, a, you know, there's no perfect solution. Thanks for the insight. Commissioner Brennan. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I appreciate uh, this discussion. I will say this, that with respect to uh, Santa Cruz Avenue in particular, Yes, there are any number of important things that we have to consider, including public comment and private ownership and all that sort of stuff. But with respect to Santa Cruz being a pedestrian mall park, if you will, that's something that I think we may be able to help engage in, in terms of bringing a vibrancy. I also think that the city, we've been talking about this for a long time, if the city provides a central infrastructure parking space so that we can do that kind of a thing, it's kind of a win-win. So there are some, in my mind, basic fundamentals that we as a city can do to create, not just wait for, you know what I mean? It's a chicken or an egg kind of a thing that by showing some leadership, we, we position it in such a way that it, it has to go there. Yeah, th thanks. And, and again, thank you, Commissioner Bryman, for, for that point. Um, um, so there, there's two things. Again, um, I, I know that, that Santa Cruz is a pedestrian mall has, has been much debated, and, and, and it will probably be debated, to be honest with you, long after I'm on city council. And that is, back to the city manager's point, it's about 50-50. You know, at the beginning of the pandemic, we, we did close Santa Cruz down completely. I got calls from local businesses every day every day saying it's, it's killing my business. Um, and, and so, and, and again, these are, um, and, and I can go down the list, the bad mouth meow guy. I mean, it's, it's like, I, I, I heard from them all and, and, and they were very, very concerned that, that they're, and again, these were the non-restaurants, right? Um, that their potential customers weren't able to, to get in and get out, weren't able to sort of drive by and, and see that they were open or not open. And, and, and so it, it's really challenging when you have like this idea of like, you know, a pedestrian mall, but when you have this person who 
this is their livelihood. This is like how they put food on the table saying that this is, this is a challenge for me. And, and so again, I, I, and, and I do think like what we're seeing with, with, um, you, you know, the section close, um, you, you know, between uh, Starbucks and, and left bank and, and the section for further, further down, I do think we can see those as, as test, right. Um, and, 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 and they may sort of evolve into to something, right? But but that is, I think, going to be really one of the challenges to, to having a pedestrian, um, full pedestrian mall is is is, is business pushback. And so then you go to the what you mentioned, and and that is some centralized parking structure. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work without that. It it absolutely will not yeah. work without that. Yeah. And so and and it's not political will that we're missing, it's money. And and I think about $30 million. Correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> city manager Jerome Robinson. It's a lot of money. And 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 the conversations I've had with, with businesses um has been that like the city pays for it. Uh, um, and and not enough they don't pay for it. Um, and and so it, it's it's hard for me to and I know that there are these schemes of having like you know parking and retail and housing. I'm just saying and, and I know that there has been some efforts and I think there will be some efforts along those lines in the future. Those things are just very, very, very complex um, to, to put together. But it's hard for me in the age of of Uber and Lyft in an age where I'm seeing stats of, of 18 year olds and 16 year olds like sort of applying for driver's licenses going down for me to say, hey, I'm going to, um, you, you know, and again, we don't have that money sitting around. So we're, 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 we're borrowing it. So we're taking out bonds. It's hard for me to support the idea of borrowing $30 million to build a parking structure um, when all of the stats I'm seeing is saying that like, well, you know, the usage of, 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 of cars by younger generations, it's, it's going down. And, and, and so I, I think that that's where, where it's at. I, I literally, and I, I've been quoted in the paper as like, I, I said, it, it's, it's like someone saying, go build a $30 million blockbuster. And I'm like, I don't know that, that I'm going to sign up for that. And, and so that's the real conversation to be had. And, but, but I know that like, as passionately as I am concerned about like that cost, there are others in the community who say, no, no, the, the, the key to success on Santa Cruz is a parking structure. And, and, and it, again, I, I would love if we could test it out without spending the $30 million, but it, it's one of those things that, 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 that's hard to do. If it's entirely on the city's dime, then I get, I get the hesitancy, but there's long been a discussion about monetizing that structure and a public private partnership where we incentivize to not only build affordable housing, which we desperately need, but to build more housing. It brings the vibrancy downtown. There is a, a, a parking structure within. I mean, I, it's thinking big and it is complex, but I, I don't think we should be handling this on our own. I think we should have, we, we should try to strike a public, a private public partnership. I, I, I totally agree. And the, if, if you have anyone in the, on the private side that's interested in that, like give them my number. Um, I am <laughs> I, I'm open to it. Like, right? I'm 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 open to it. One of the um, you know uh, issues is is um or, or some one of the comparisons between like downtown Menlo Park or Santa Cruz is is always uh, uh, between uh, that and, and and Los Altos. And one of the things I always point out is in, in Los Altos, at, at some point in the past, you had a high net worth individual that came in and acquired lots of the, the, the parcels and then was able to sort of very much program it in a way uh, to create a, in, in, in the context of a, a, larger, a larger picture, right? Um, and, and so um, that all to say that, like, again, if there's some high net worth individual out there that's very much interested in Santa Cruz, and maybe they are, and I, they just haven't made their way to my ear yet, um, then, then I'm, I, again, like, I'm, I'm all open to it. But, but yeah, I, I think the challenge is, 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 is where, where the money comes from. And, and, and to your point, and I, I know you're, you're a person in, 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 in real estate is, is, uh, like, I've had real estate people who say, okay, so, you want the parking, it's got to be, it can't, you can't charge too much for the parking because then people will complain that they'll just go to Stanford Mall. And then you also want to 
add on affordable housing to that. And, and I've had real estate people say that doesn't pencil out. Now I'm not a real estate person, so, so I don't know. Like I know that a lot of times they, they try to say things don't pencil out, but, but, um, but, but that is, I think the real issue that, 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 that we have with that. But that's true. If it's all on one party or the other, it's not going to work. If it's all on the city, it's not going to work. If it's all on the developer, it's not going to work. Does anyone else have um, any comments for Mayor Combs? Questions? Uh, it, well, if I may, I just wanted to let you know that um, Mayor Combs mentioned the Measure T bonds, and I think the council will be discussing that at an upcoming meeting in May. So potentially May 11th or the following meeting. Thank you. Thanks for the info. Uh, Vice Chair Staley Shang. Hi there. Uh, thank you, Mayor Combs. Good to see you, Drew. Um, I we've talked about this before, but I just wanted to bring it up again. What is the most effective way for us to make an impact as commissioners with our community in these roles that we currently serve in? Um, we, we have a number of opportunities that are now opening up as, as some of us take our tenure and, and move on to other roles of service uh, of our community. But I, I would really like to know for those who remain and those of us who continue to serve Menlo Park, what is the best way to truly be effective in solving for change and bettering Menlo Park when at times it can feel prevented by um, the realities of process? Yeah, thanks for, for that that um, that question, uh, Commissioner Shank. It it is um, you, you know a challenge that I I face to um, obviously mm -hmm. I, I started my my sort of <laughs> engagement with with Menlo Park as a bike commissioner, mm -hmm. um, and and I remember uh, um, the uh, the um, uh, one of the first presentations we had was were uh, as a bike commission uh, was from. Um, I, I think it, some of the, uh, I think it was the vice president of sort of real estate or something at SRI. And he was talking about like the redevelopment of the SRI property and how they were going to do a bike lane um, by that. And, and uh, not too long ago, a couple of months ago, someone from SRI reached out and said, hey, I want to sort of put some time on your calendar to talk about the redevelopment of our property. And he was like, wait, um, uh, okay, uh, uh, what, what, what is that now? It's seven years. And, and again, I, I don't think that that was, was the first time. So I, 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 it, it can be a challenge because it, it, it's a, it, sometimes these things uh, um, take, take a long time. I, I wish that that were, were not the case, right? Um, I, I wish that there, there were a, a way that things have been, could be expedited, but there is a process, right? And, and, and that's, that's the whole, you know, um, idea that, 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 that we are sort of prioritizing the, the engagement, right? We're prioritizing, you, you know, every, every uh, voice or every voice that wants to be heard over expediency, like in the same way, I, I you, you know, have a have a background in in, in law, like right. right. Um, it, it is the criminal standard is is like beyond any reason about that, right? Um, uh, the civil standard is different. It's like a preponderance of, of the evidence, so it's like fifty percent plus. But the criminal standard is 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 beyond any reasonable doubt, and that's a standard by which that means that there are going to be some people who are probably guilty who go away. But, but we're prioritizing that this protection of, of, of people who, who, who are innocent. In the same way, um, or similarly, like we prioritize engagement, right? And that, that is on steroids when it comes to Menlo Park. Right? And, and so, so, so the, the processes can, can, take, can take a while. And, and, and then there's just, once there is sort of like the political will um, then there is just the issue of, of the capital, right? Like, like where does the money come from? What then doesn't get, get money? Um, it is, it is a, a, in, in that case, a zero sum, sum game. And it, it's like, um, th there's that famous definition of politics is all about how you distribute a limited amount of resources. 
And and so there there does come a point when there is this 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 when that engagement has happened and there is support, then it's like, well, then you have to go and get in the line for, for resources. And so I would say that like it just sort of um uh pluck away and and know though that that like there 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 is like uh th there is value to that 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 engagement there is value to that that perspective uh but but it will come with some frustration and and sometimes it is just like focusing on on one thing right and i even on on, on council on my, my discussions with with um with the city manager it's like i used to always tell people you know just three three things just focus on three things three things since you know being on city council i'm like just one thing just find the one thing that you're really passionate about and and, and keep focusing on it and i know that like I, I think that this this commission has had seen some success um um in, in that uh in, in you know in a, a similar approach i, I think if you, you think about for instance like the play structure at Nilan, right i know for like a, a long time um it was a, a an almost singular focus uh of, of a lot of people on this commission and 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 that's probably what it took and even still that was something that that took very long and 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 based on every time i go there it's clearly it's something that is without a doubt completely successful right has I'm sure there are some detractors, but no detractors that that I've I've seen, and even something like that, right? Still took took uh, um, a, a lot of time. So I, again, I would say though that like you know, find one thing and 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 just sort of keep plugging away on it, and and understand that like um, you know there is real value to your 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 involvement, um, and 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 again the, the same frustrations again like you you face. Um, I face at the, on, on the city council level. Like, I can tell you, going from a commission to city council, it doesn't change. Like, right? it's not like then it's like the keys of the kingdom get opened, and then like everything you want to get done gets done. Um, that that that's I I again I have to to sort of like use these the same sort of strategy and approach again. Like when it comes to to, to you know my engagement on on, on on city council. Hopefully, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I echo um, her thoughts. I, having been on the commission now, this um, is already my second term. I think at times it can feel fast moving. And when you cut a ribbon on a park, it, it feels great. Um, and definitely this year has been more of a challenge of how to be effective and how to um, kind of best work on this laundry list and this, this work master plan and work plan that we have and that we're excited about. Um, how to kind of go through those and make sure that we're chopping away. Um, so maybe um, one thought we had was just, you know, this was a great starting point, having this open dialogue with you. And this maybe kind of helps us as things continue to open up and evolve. And we continue to have this work plan that we want to get done, seeing how that fits in with what city council is looking to do. And so things can hopefully maybe be done more effectively or, or feel that way at least. Yeah, and, and hopefully again, if I'm I'm playing my role somewhat effectively as, as a liaison, um, then 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 yeah, that there is that sense of 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 a connection between uh, what uh, you know your priorities are in your work plan and your understanding of where 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 the council um, where the council's priorities are, and then, and then again, and and that doesn't mean that there has to be a complete connection, right? But the extent to which there isn't, that you have complete visibility into that, right? Um, and in 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 that, and where there is some 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 disconnect, as as I say, you know, again, it's all about, and I say this to to the city manager, it's all about what gets three votes, right? And so, and, and if you watch the city council, sometimes I'm not in those three votes, right? And so, or something that I want want to have three votes doesn't get to three votes, and so. And, and so even I like um, you, you know face that that obstacle and, and it is it is uh, you, you know attempting to to convince my my colleagues, and so it could be the case that there are things that that maybe are the priority of of this commission that that are my own priorities that just doesn't have three votes right and and then but then let's let's make sure that you guys all have uh complete visibility into that right and and understand that and and um and understand it without actually having to like 
you know, sit through a five hour council meeting. Um, hopefully again, like I'm, I'm, you, you can use me as a resource uh, in, in a way to, to sort of reach out and, and get a sense of, of where, uh, of where things are. But from what I've heard from the city council so far, I'm very like optimistic about, again, like I say, things in, in, in this area, there, there will be some hard decisions like regarding sort of, I, I think the reopening, right? Or what, what the city wants to do, but, but overall, I, I think that there is a great deal of, of commitment to like the services that the city provides in this area, whether it's um, like, you know, recent decisions, right. To, to which I think is on the agenda um, to, to ban library fines or, or really uh, recent decisions to, to expand access to some of our, 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 our recreation programming, what sort of scholarships, like are really in some council, I don't know the extent any of you sort of uh, uh, looked into that, uh, that debate. I mean, some members of the council was, were like, well, how does it look like if we get rid of all of like the, um, the fees associated with our, our parks and rec, you, you know, sort of programming. And, and so, and that, that's really very progressive thinking, right? But, but, and, and um, I'm not saying I'm, I'm supportive of that, but the idea that someone sort of throws that out on the table, I think sort of should suggest to you like the, the willingness to really sort of um, um, think of, well, the importance that the council sees uh, of, of, again, the services we pro provide in this area, but, but the, the willingness to, to really be sort of to think bold uh, about about uh, how how the city engages in in this this area. Thanks again for your um, commitment. Does anyone else have any comments or questions for Mayor Combs? Well, thank you very much for joining us, Starla. Thank you very much for your insight as well and joining us. Yeah, thank you guys for having me, and thank you for your your service. I know um, for for some of you, it's it's coming near the, the end of, of your of your tenure, and I know that that has been extended <laughs> extended. Mm -hmm. um, uh, either uh, yeah, um, uh, but but no, I, I I really this is 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 a lot to ask of people, right? Um, especially during the pandemic, we all spend uh, every day on on Zoom Zoom Zoom, Zoom uh, meetings, and then to have to then, you know, at 6.30, uh, um, um, you know, as everything else with, with your life going on uh, to, to, to really sort of bring bring yourself, your full self to, to these discussions is a lot. And, and I just wanna say, I, I'm completely appreciative and it, it is like a central part of our government um, in, this, in this community. And I think it's one of the things that, that make this, this community special, right? Um, that, that you have some, insanely talented <laughs> and accomplished people um, that, that are really willing to like volunteer their time and, and their expertise and their thoughtfulness. Um, again, it is what really makes, I, I think for my, my family, this, this, this community really, really special. And so, so I thank you. Thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Thank you again. Okay, thank you for including me. I really appreciate it. Uh, so uh, moving on to regular business, we are looking to um, accept the Parks and Recreation Commission meeting minutes for the meeting of March 24th, 2021. Attachment was there to review. Uh, does anyone have any edits, corrections, comments on, on this item? I don't see any. Um, and so at this point, um, may I have a motion to uh, approve the minutes of the March 24th, 2021 meeting? Move to approve the minutes. Thank you. And may I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mark. So that is approved and accepted. And then under E2 regular business, we have expanding public access to oh, facilities. Hang on. I'm sorry, Chair Baskin, oh. can you hang on just a second? Oh, we, sure. We do need to do the, the roll call vote. So oh, I'm a, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> we had, a, we had a, um, a motion by Vice Chair Staley Schenck, mm -hmm. seconded by Commissioner Bryan. So I'll just go around and call your other names. And if you could just uh, tell me 
yes or no, aye or nay. Uh, Commissioner Payne? Yes. Commissioner Diepenbrock? Yes. Commissioner Harris? Yes. And Chair Baskin? Yes. Okay. The motion passes unanimously. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the reminder, Nick. I got ahead of myself. I'm so excited with no uh, edits to that. Uh, so moving along, we have expanding public access to facilities, programs, and services. Very excited. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair, and good evening, Commissioners. I'm going to walk you through a presentation that's very much um, similar to a presentation that was made to the City Council last night. Um, uh, this is a topic that has you know, been subject of discussion for a couple of months now, uh, but the City Council uh, did have the opportunity to, uh, to review this and weigh in. So uh, here we go. We're talking about the phase in and sequencing for safely and sustainably public uh, expanding public access to um, city facilities. Let's see if I can get my PowerPoint to work here. A little bit of background. Uh, this has been in process for a couple of months now. Um, the City Council has received published reports on the topic of expanding services to further indoor public access. Um, all of those have been conveyed to the uh, Commission, uh, typically as informational items, but also there had been some discussion in past meetings on March 9th. Um, the City Council received reports on uh, some objective criteria to guide the facility reopenings on April 6th. Um, also, um, some additional discussion on that same topic and a little more detail about what the reactivations might look like. Then on April 13th, as the Commission is aware, uh, a more in-depth look at um, what um, library and community services facility program and event reactivation might entail, the phasing, some of the challenges, uh, financial staffing, uh, safety and otherwise. And then um, last night, I uh, reviewed this proposed phase in sequence for expanding public access. And um, all the links in that presentation just lead to those reports just for, uh, for the public uh, convenience. Um, it's noted that the city has continued to provide services during the pandemic uh, in modified formats. The police department has been operating 24 seven. The city's public works department has continued to operate the water utility to street landscape facility maintenance. As you know, city owned par outdoor parklands have been uh, open and accessible with some limitations like social distancing and masks uh, throughout the pandemic, essentially, and key resources actually during the shelter in places in particular. The senior center nutrition program pivoted to home delivery within a week after the pandemic, the, uh, the first shelter in place and continues to do that and does wellness checks by telephone with those um, older adults. And as you know, the child cares, after school cares, aquatic centers, skate park, tennis courts, athletic fields opened in mid 2020, again, with some limitations um, and as well the city hall permit counter. Uh, the library curbside pickup opened at the same time in mid 2020, it's been operating ever since. Uh, recreation classes, community events, outdoor virtual since the fall, and those have been continuing. Uh, city owned playgrounds opened in fall of 2020, as you know. And then uh, a number of the sort of the more back of the house type departments in the city have been operating mostly remote. It's community development that was subject earlier discussing with the mayor, the city manager's office, administrative services, finance, IT, those kind of things uh, have been ongoing throughout um, the pandemic. So we've uh, been quite busy, but now we're really talking about key considerations for safely and, ex and sustainably expanding um, that access to include indoor public access to facilities. Um, just mentioned that the services are operating in modified formats. A uh, key to note that due to the economic downturn, there were substantial budget reductions and staffing reductions. The city does not have the operational capacity to expand all facilities and services at once. That really needs to be something that's phased in if it is to be done safely and sustainably within the resources that we have. Uh, we're looking forward to it and we're very excited about it, but we're just being realistic about like what's achievable. Um, uh, great news is that most customers or users and all city employees are now eligible for vaccination, at least adults 16 up. And, um, However, vaccine access and there's some vaccine hesitancy, those continue to pose some challenges. Uh, definitely wanna keep an eye on that. Certainly events in other areas of the nation and world in India, for example, um, the outbreaks could drive variants to uh, vary further and, and, 
can cause uh, recurrence. So we want to be mindful of that. Um, the city council um, is kind of on the threshold of beginning the budget development process for the new fiscal year, which starts July 1st. So that's kind of a key element of all of this is just the budget and staffing um, to ramp services uh, back up, uh, hopefully, ideally, and to expand that access. And certainly public health guidance um, continues to change, continues to evolve. It's um, generally on the path of, of relaxing in a responsible way. Uh, you probably all heard the reports that um, outdoor um, masks are, are not required for fully vaccinated individuals in most situations and anticipate more of those kind of relaxations as we make our way out of the pandemic. And notably, the, the governor announced that all things continue to go well, then June 15th, the color tier system would be retired. So that's like a key date on our radar. So talking about the prioritization and a phase in sequence, establishing that now, which the city council reviewed last night and generally uh, had assent with, uh, had some comments, feedback concerns, all really great as did some members of the public, but generally speaking, um, uh, sort of had assent with the, with the sequence presented and that provides the, the council advisory bodies like the commission, staff and the public clear and realistic expectations for when city services may be safely expanded. So, you know, having a plan just really helps everybody be on the same page and, and know what we're expecting. Uh, the minimum lead time needed to expand access to facilities is eight to 10 weeks, just because of the level of modifications, staffing investment that is involved. Uh, we're recommending phasing in and sequencing over several months, you know, like six to eight months, um, starting shortly after the state lifts the restrictions on June 15th, by restrictions, I mean the color tier in particular, um, assuming that happens June 15th. And so far it's on track to do that. So no reason why it would deviate. Um, the library commission, which meets sort of at a different time of month. So they were kind of able to meet um, just last week and they unanimously, after reviewing all of this, unanimously recommended expanding library indoor access, which is considered one of the lower risk activities on or near July 1st. So, you know, they kind of started to look at, you know, the date and make that recommendation. Oops, I think I need to go forward. And I mentioned the new fiscal year takes effect July 1st. So that's a key just sort of resource availability date, or at least a budgetary planning date for the city council and the city. And of course, phase and sequences can always be adjusted according to changing circumstances. That's really key to have some flexibility and to have it be sustainable. And of course, the city council ultimately is the policy making uh, body uh, the governing body for the city, so they can revise the sequence at any time. So we're talking about four phases um, at this point in time. Again, over a period of several months, um, taking into consideration all those factors we just talked about, and also looking at you know where's the need the greatest in the community, and also balancing which activities carry what levels of risk. You know, some indoor activities carry greater risk of transmission than others. Uh, we have to be mindful that even though vaccinations for adults have continued apace of children, are, there still is no vaccine for children. So there's still a little bit of you know, additional work needed there to um, just ensure that they also are safe in, in these environments. So in the first phase, uh, really focusing on the interim services during construction of the new Menlo Park Community Campus, as the commission knows, the current Onetta Harris Community Center campus facilities will be uh, closed in mid-June to allow for construction to begin. And in the meantime, those services will be located in other, other parts of town. In particular, the Senior Center, um, the Oneta Harris Community Center, uh, like recreation classes and other activities. Um, and looking at potentially the Neighborhood Services Center, which is um, on Willow Road near um, Newbridge, um, which is currently a police substation, but looking at these various spaces and making sure that they are available at some point in phase one. And again, with phase one occurring sometime in the probably beginning of July, end of June timeframe when the restrictions change. So focusing on those, also the lower risk public services that are currently operating in, in modified formats. So um, that would be indoor public access to the libraries, a pretty low impact activities, plenty of opportunity for social distancing and kind of no need for a lot of close contact um, it, um, with the weather being what it is um, continuing with outdoor recreation classes and really expanding those 
uh, to the greatest extent possible in the first phase. Again, these are things that are kind of already operating. We just need to tweak them a bit, expand them a little bit. So that's phase one. Oh, and also the police department lobby. Um, phase two, uh, you know, a month or two into this whole sequence, we'll be toward the latter part of summer, second half of summer, um, beginning some of the moderate risk indoor community services programs that might that would happen in like a recreation center or a gymnasium, for example. We're focusing on those programs targeted to children and youth first um, because of the need there, and they have fewer options as far as you know their own personal mobility and resources to seek private sector alternatives. And then moving into programs targeted to the general population. This is the lower impact programs because there is more respiration that occurs, you know, in, in these sort of indoor people exerting themselves. And so we want to kind of have that in phase two just because of the additional risk. But the need is great. So that's why as early as phase two. And then um, city council chambers, a pretty big one, in particular for the city council. Um, the, those could be very high risk environments, general public packing the chambers, uh, hours on end, elbow to elbow, a lot of talking, a lot of expressing yourself. You know, it's engaging in the business of government. Um, currently, the Brown Act has had certain provisions suspended, and that's why how we're meeting by Zoom tonight, actually. Um, so these, this would actually apply to in-person meetings of the commission as well. I'm looking at like the latter part of phase two um, to resume some level of, well, to maybe resume in-person uh, public meetings. Um, there have been some interest in folks to continue to have an option to video in uh, like for public comments or to participate in the meetings. So that will take a little bit of additional time to prepare facilities to accommodate that, to have an in-person meeting and also have like a video option happening at the same time. Um, so for all those reasons, that's um, it's priority, but also there's the additional risk and the preparation needed. So that's phase two. And then moving into phase three, at this point, we're kind of looking more like in the fall timeframe looking at the more high contact indoor programs, um, including gymnastics. Um, these are close physical person to person contact, high levels of exertion, a lot of respiration, extended periods of time, enclosed environment. Um, additionally, and, and there's a few other programs that this would apply to, um, you know, contact sports indoors, things like that. But um, the gymnastics program in particular, because of the, the budget, uh, the economic recession and downturn, and because of um, there was just no way that that program could operate during the height of the pandemic, um, there currently are no resources allocated toward those operations. And so that is a process that the city council and advisory bodies and staff in the community we need to kind of undertake to um, assess the different options for providing that service, identify the resources and implement those services. So that will take some additional time in addition to the elevated risk. And so that's why this particular set of programs with gymnastics being an example uh, would be in like phase three. Um, and then city hall, it's, it's kind of a complex office facility that has some employee only areas and it has some conference rooms like embedded in the employee areas. And so just suffice it to say, it's a, it's a complicated office building um, and so that's, and, and there's less of a, a need uh, for community members to go into some of those areas. So that's why it's contemplated to be, you know, in this later phase. And then the final phase, phase four, and at this point, we're looking at the end of the calendar year, or maybe beginning of next calendar year, according to this kind of overall time frame, would be facility rentals. Uh, this by private parties renting, you know, like a big room that the city owns in like one of the rec centers or something. Um, high density indoor gatherings, long periods of time, people eating food, drinking, talking, singing, dancing. Um, you know, we have no real control to a great extent of what's going on in there. Uh, nothing, you know, not saying there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with people running the facilities, but it is a, a higher risk proposition. Um, and so that for the, and there's, while there is a need, there are other needs that seem to kind of super, supersede it at this point, combined with the risk, and that's why it's contemplated to be more in like phase four. Um, at least we're talking about, you know, people having, you know, big parties and whatnot in, in the facilities. It's a little bit different than like meetings. And then special events, uh, the large scale special events, um, you know, there's a term uh, that was coined of super spreader 
So we want to be cognizant of that large scale events. We're talking hundreds or thousands of people. Um, those uh, numerous households, very great risk of viral spread. That's well known now. And, and they also can take several months of advanced planning to pull off properly. Um, and there's an investment in financial and personnel resources. And so for this reason, you know, those are kind of contemplated to be kind of at the end of the, of the, of the phase in period. And then all other indoor programs, there's a few other facilities that um, just lower priority that we would just open them all at that point. Uh, that's what's contemplated here. And so that's just the overview. It kind of summarizes what was in the report and what the city council reviewed and the public commented on. And, and generally that seems to be the, the, the path we're on. The council seemed to generally agree with it with some, you know, some suggestions and feedback, but definitely would like to hear um, the input of the Parks and Recreation Commission because of, of all the advisory bodies, I think this affects your area of, of advisory responsibility the greatest. So thank you for your time. Very much looking forward to the discussion. Sean, if I may, uh, guys, I'm going to have to excuse myself uh, very shortly to pick up my son for something. That said, Sean, I'm, I'm wondering where the music in Fremont Park comes in with respect to those phases. Where, where, where does that event fall in terms of phases, those events? One question, actually, um, do we um, call for public comment after this? Because oh, I'm sorry. Under presentations. You usually do, yes. You usually okay. call for, unless there's sort of clarifying questions from the commission, from any commissioners, usually call for public comment, um, hear the public comment, and then bring the discussion back to the commission. Mark, are you okay with that, or is it a clarifying question? Well, I guess it depends on how you define it. it it's it, it is a clarification. I simply want to know where those events come in with respect to the phases. That's all. Yeah, okay. I think I think if if you don't mind, I could probably just answer that really quickly. I, I think you know, as the music in the park would would really fall in the the special events category, which would be more like phase four. Okay. And at this point, if there are any public comments, um, you can use the raise hand feature, please. Or if you're phoning in, press uh, star nine on your phone. Checking to see, I don't see any public comments on the site. Okay, thank you. Um, so sorry for, uh, does anyone else have any questions for uh, Director Reinhardt? We appreciate the update. Very excited for the phases. Very excited for what's to come. And I, I, we do understand that all of this is a fast moving target. So uh, we just had the announcement yesterday from the CDC of new guidelines on masking. And um, come June 15th, we'll, we'll see how things go. So I, I'm just excited that we're getting ahead of this very evolving situation mm -hmm. and reactivating as you know, well as we can. I had a question. Are these phases independent of the previous benchmark that you had mentioned where um, the city was waiting for herd immunity before opening sort of the city run programs? Uh, that's a great question, uh, Commissioner. Um, no, not really independent from that. What we're seeing is um, vaccination rates um, as of yesterday. I wrote it down, but I'm not sure if I have it right here in front of me in San Mateo County. Um, anyway, they, they're progressing apace and it does seem like we as a county and as the Bay Area would be on track to achieve or get close to that herd immunity, um, you know, with by the end of summer, fall. Um, so this, this does kind of dovetail with that, assuming things sort of proceed apace. The, the numbers I was looking for so excuse a little fuzziness, I don't have them right in front of me, but I just checked them yesterday. Um, San Mateo County um, overall was um, north of 70% of people 16 and over had received at least one dose. And roughly 55% had, 
had received like both doses or the one shot and are fully vaccinated. So a little more than half fully vaccinated at this point. Again, adults 16 and up. Menlo mm -hmm. Park's a bit higher. I think those numbers were 83% first shot, which would put the, the full immunity um, in the high 50s. So, you know, it's definitely moving in the right direction. So that's why we, we want to make sure we have this plan in place and the phase in um, beginning the ramp up now with that target of, you know, shortly after the color tiers are, are, um, are hopefully retired. So we're, we're very much looking forward to getting, to getting back in action, that is for sure. Yeah, no, that's all great news. So um, things like the library then for in-person, um, you know, visiting and resource utilization, that'll be, it, it sounded like it was one of the um, first tiers. I can't remember if it was one or two, but so that would be moving forward regardless of the like overall vaccination status of the city? Well, if the bottom were to fall out, you know, tomorrow and for some reason, like all those 70 plus percent of adults who got their one shot for some reason over the next two months don't get their second shot and, you know, their vaccination doesn't happen, then yeah, we'd probably want to change course. But knowing that, you know, it's either a three or four week series between the first and second shot, depending on which vaccine you got. And then there's a two week waiting period after that for the immunity to take place. Uh, we assume that most people who get their first shot, the vast majority are gonna return to get their second shot. So it's on target to kind of hit that, that point in six to eight weeks. And so we have a fair a degree of confidence that uh, the, those previous criteria will be met on or around July 1st. And so we're definitely planning to start the phases at that point. But again, you know, think things could change. This pandemic has surprised us uh, three times before. Yeah, okay. So I just <laughs> wanted to clarify whether, so this is just sort of the outline of how things are, hope, like hopefully how things will go based on the current vaccination rates, but that's still very much a factor as to whether it moves forward. Yes, it's definitely very much still a factor. However, <laughs> moving in the right direction, which which we hope it continues to do. Just curious, because it seems like other cities have been opening. Um, I'm just using the library as an example, because it is an indoor, in-person, you know, obviously, um, space, but um, an important resource. And so it seems like other people have different benchmarks and was just kind of interested in how we're, you know, moving, progressing toward reopening such an important resource for our community. Couldn't agree more and really grateful for you characterizing it that way because I, I think that way too. Um, and e every city has kind of its own unique set of circumstances that they're, they're kind of dealing with. In some cases financial, others having to do with staffing or just sort of the legal back and forth, um, you know, related to employee safety and some other considerations, um, as well as sort of their, uh, what, what, what um, kind of criteria that their, their governing bodies and, and leadership and the community is focused on. And I think, you know, one thing about Menlo Park that makes it, re it really is a special and standout community in, in San Mateo County for sure. And I would say also in all of Silicon Valley um, for all the reasons that, you know, the mayor mentioned earlier and, um, also just the financial um, factors are, are just kind of unique, I think, in Menlo Park, just like how substantial the um, uh, economic downturn kind of affected our, our capacity. So there's a number of things that just sort of make each city kind of unique. Uh, we're kind of moving along with the pack. We're certainly not at the front, uh, but we certainly won't be lagging too far behind the, the front runners either. Uh, and our focus has really primarily been on safety. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on this agenda item? Uh, thank you uh, for the presentation. And moving on to informational items, um, we have a number of them under uh, item F1, City Council Reports for Parks and Recreation Commission to review. All these were attached to the agenda, so hopefully everyone had some time to review ahead of this meeting. Uh, they include, 
include the proposed phase in sequence for safe, safely and sustainably expanding public access to facilities and services, uh, the city council direction on cost recovery policy, library overdue fines and recreation user fees, and extending the terms of various advisory bodies, extending a recruitment application deadline and postponement of interviews and appointments of various um, advisory. Um, and I know uh, we are actively uh, looking to, um, to recruit for this commission as well, as we have uh, three commissioners that we're acknowledging and sending off uh, after this meeting. I guess at this point, does anyone have any questions or comments on those informational items? I mean, now that we have staff present, if there's anything um, that needs clarifying. That didn't include the Carl Clark storyboards, right? We're gonna touch nope. on that. Okay, thank you. Yep, so we will, perfect segue. We can segue right into the storyboard for Carly Clark Park uh, staff report. Uh, so maybe if you'd like some clarification on that, we have staff here for that. So I do, I do have the image here. Um, I think the, there was a one public comment had a, a great suggestion about the um, the captions. Um, so um, I think I'm sharing the screen now and you can see sort of what the board itself, at least the, the, this iteration that it's at now, it's my understanding that um, uh, Adrian, the, the former assistant community services director was working closely with uh, members of the Menlo Park Historical Association and I believe um, Bell Haven Action. Uh, I'm not sure exactly who from that group she was in contact with to kind of develop out the content here um, I was glad to hear that there's some additional attempts to outreach to the Clark family, just to kind of get their um, sort of a you know, blessing uh, for this, because this is about their family member who's being honored here, uh, rightfully so. Um, so but the captions it does make a lot of sense. We can go back to the drawing board on that and, and connect with the family, I, I, I would think through Bellhaven Action. Um, and I know that the Historical Association had um, uh, mentioned that they were hoping to do like an unveiling June 19th. So uh, that does seem very much achievable. Um, although uh, depending to some extent, like how, how quickly the, the changes can be made, like confirmed any changes and, and make those changes. So we'll, we'll certainly circle back with the uh, folks from the Historical Association and Bellhaven Action who had been kind of leading this element of the project and uh, just kind of confirm with them uh, you know, the, the design. And then the other element I wanted to just share with the commission is a potential location of, for the board. So um, uh, let me see here. Here is Carl E. Clark Park. I've just got kind of like a Google map going here. Um, so you should be seeing like a satellite view of, of Carl E. Clark Park. So let me see if I can just sort of toggle it to look a little fancy here. So the, the monument sign right out there that, that I think was in the background of Commissioner Harris's um, Zoom there is kind of right there. And you know, this is sort of the front of the park right here, as you know. And um, this little patch of grass right here looks like a pretty good location. Now, um, the uh, Historical Association or Bellhaven Action may have already identified a location. I'm sorry, I had not had the chance to hear it back, confirm with them, but this was the location that staff was kind of thinking would be a pretty good fit, uh, very much like the sign that's over by the, the other storyboards in town. Close to the sidewalk, little setback, plenty of area for people to gather around, keeps this grassy portion open to function as a park for kicking a ball around with kids and stuff, but it's right there. So, so that's kind of what we were thinking, um, but um, definitely happy to hear uh, input from the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, to, to be, you know, just carried back to the Historical Association and Bellhaven Action who really are kind of driving the project. So uh, Chair Baskin, it also looks like we have uh, a hand raised from one of the attendees, I'm assuming for public comment. Uh, fantastic, so we can, um, 
normally take public comment after this time, right? Thank you. So um, uh, if, if the person with the hand raised would like to um, introduce themselves. Hello. Good evening. This is Pamela Jones, resident of Menlo Park. And um, I am also on the board of directors of the Menlo Park Historical Association and, and do have some connection to Bill ha Bellhaven Action. Um, I first want to just really uh, thank Adrienne for all of how well she worked with us because there were so many people that were involved in this project. And I think Brian Henry was involved a little bit. And um, <clears throat> the designer was amazing. Um, uh, we kind of took the design from what you have, uh, the other historical association park design, I can't remember where it is now, and the Bedwell Bayfront. Um, and the last piece, putting the captions, uh, that was just something that we missed. Um, so I'm glad that more eyes saw that one. And it was particularly important to the family that uh, Anna Eshoo um, and Mr. Clark be specifically acknowledged in the, uh, in the photo of the two of them. I think it's the one in the, the middle. Um, and, um, it's, and I just really appreciate, you know, how much the staff of the city has worked with us. Uh, it hasn't been an e easy um, uh, project because there's so many people involved, and they're all over the United States. It's not like they're all here. Um, the date that we would like to see it installed is um, June 19th, and that is a significant day for Juneteenth. It's a significant day for uh, Black folks in America, so we thought that would just be an amazing time uh, to do that. As you may remember, the uh, park dedication was done on um, – Reverend Martin Luther King's birthday. So we've really been able to connect all of the pieces in regards to who Mr. Carl E. Clark, um, who he was. One more really quick thing. As you all see, his name is spelled with a K, Carl. His mother named him that. And when he went into the military, like the military did with a lot of people, changed it to a C. So we wanted to make sure that we had his birth name up there and um, which we suggestly, um, successfully did. Again, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to this last step. And I don't know how to hang my, I don't know how to mm -hmm. just unmute myself. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Okay. We got you, Pam. Thank you. <laughs> You're Looks welcome. like we have a, another uh, comment. Thank you. Uh, this is Cecilia Taylor. Um, as you all know, I am on the Menlo Park City Council. I am also founder of Bellhaven Action. And this has been, um, it actually, I can say a long time coming, um, but considering all the things that have happened um, in the past four years, the time has moved by pretty quickly. Um, and I just want to say thank you. Um, the idea came to me when I was at Mr. Clark's funeral um, in March of 2017. And the process that the city already had laid out um, to be able to name a park that didn't have a name um, went by fairly smoothly. And the fact that I was able to um, bring in our youth and our seniors um, and just community members all throughout Menlo Park, um, I still remember the dedication and the process works if you use it and also, and if you're inclusive, um, this is extremely exciting. I, I wish all of his family still lived in the area so that they could be here. Um, and so I know that if it is happening in June, I would definitely invite all of them. Um, but I just want to say thank you to everybody who made this possible. Um, and I look forward to June 19th, if that's the date you choose. Thank you. Thank you for your comments and joining us, Council Member Taylor. I do remember that um, the evening um, that we did discuss it and was one of my most favorite um, Parks and Recreation Commission meetings. Probably my most favorite. Commissioner Harris. Yeah, th thank you. Um, 
I, re I remember that meeting and then of course the, the dedication ceremony and I brought my sons to that. And my sons I know would love to go to this ceremony as well. But my, unless the uh, advisory board extension gets re-extended for another month, I won't be on the commission anymore. So I, I just wanted to throw out a request for an invite so I can sure, surely be there at the right time with my boys so we can, we can go to this again. Um, this is really wonderful. As I, as I was listening uh, to you, Sean, and, and then uh, when you showed the, the map, it r reminded me of one of the things that I most like about the storyboard placement in Fremont Park. Um, it's a, in a great location, the one in Fremont Park, and I've chatted with my kids when we've looked at the history of Fremont Park through those storyboards. But what's also nice is there's a bench there. And so you can sit down and actually have a conversation. And I think that at Carl E. Clark Park, there's an opportunity for reflection. Like I could see families reading this and then talking and even, and if an opportunity was to sit down, I think if we could think of this as not just a, a, a momentary stop, but for some people, it will be more than that and an opportunity to think about, for us to think about it as a kind of a reflection space. And that's, uh, and maybe it can't be done by June 19th, the, the you know, that component, but I, I think it would be an ideal, especially given that space that you identified. I don't know if that's where it'll actually end up, but considering how people might interact around this storyboard, because it's such a compelling story, right? A, a, a compelling, true, you know, nonfiction story about someone in our community. Yep. And, and so I do think it could be that reflective space. I love that. Can I chime in? Um, I love that idea, uh, uh, Christopher, and think that it would be wise if we could just take a look at where there is an opportunity for reflection, but also engagement with the with the content. So if more people are, you know, if, if more people would reflect on this closer to the park, you know, the playground area, or, you know, by the sign, I think it would be nice to almost, you know, just sort of go out and do a usability study, just raise, you know, related to how people engage with the space. And, you know, I think that Pamela and certainly Cecilia could give feedback on that um, based on community feedback. Um, I have a question and then I have an idea. Um, what is the process, Sean? I want to make sure that before this goes to print, that this like is seen by a copywriter, so that we um, are making sure that the narrative there is is uh, that all of the syntax and everything that's going in there reflects as strongly as warranted uh, to honor Mr. Clark. So I was wondering, is that a part of the protocol before it goes to print that we have a copywriter look at it, or no? Uh, you know, that's a, a great question. I would need to check in with the team that had been developing this and um, the public engagement manager, Clay Curtin. Um, and there's a professional designer um, who I think one of the public commenters referenced okay. um, who's, who's actually doing the design. So exactly who is sort of reviewing the, the copy. Okay. Um, I need to kind of get back to you on that. But okay. I know there's a team of pros okay. uh, working on it. So Cecilia and Pam, if you're still listening, please you can send it to me, you can send it to anybody else, but like we just need to make sure that it's we've got a couple commas in there and that it it's crystallized. And then the other thing that I was just gonna say is um, you know, when we were a part of that meeting about the park, we learned a great deal about Mr. Clark's book that was published. And many of us ordered it and purchased it as well. And, and I was wondering if we could install one of those little libraries here, or if somebody felt like gifting one of those little libraries um, and gifting some of the books that we could start, that we could add some of his content, like so that people could take and return those books and learn more about Mr. Clark above and beyond just the posts. We've had discussions about that in the past where library commissioners have come to us to see if there might be an opportunity to do a um, conjoined sort of project like that. And I think that there was some reason to need to unhinge that, but I'd like to bring that forward and, and consider that. Is 
I think that's a great idea as well. Kind of continues on the sort of, we talk about marketing and just what we're doing that helps get the word out. And I mean, this is an exciting new thing. So. So whether that's something that we do as an extension of the commission or the parks and rec um, investment in this moment, or even if it's personal, just I hope somebody will take me up on that if I can be of help with that too, because I just think that that would be a really wonderful addition to uh, the, the, the storyline and the importance of this part. It's a really unique opportunity. Thanks as always, Sarah, for all your insight and everything for, that goes into communications and marketing and just making sure we're buttoned up on what we're doing on that front. And um, so to that point, there yeah. also needs to be an article in the local paper mm -hmm. announcing that the park is being unveiled, that the storyboards are being put in and that we can have this discussed. And also it's a great way to bring visibility to the historical backing behind Juneteenth. Okay. I'm yeah, well, and I do think also just to note the timing of this works out really well because June 15th is technically still, we, we've got the announcement from the CDC, we've got the June 15th date, which things are going to be really fully open. So we can kind of be preparing ourselves and ahead of time for something that could have more of a public presence and definitely a media presence. Right. Uh, add Chair Baskin, it might be this might be something that you would want to bring back to the commission in your May meeting for the discussion. We're going to talk about the calendar here in a couple. Of Actually, th th that is a perfect segue into the Parks and Recreation Commission calendar. Um, I, I would like to bring that back into the May meeting then, because we'd need to do that then. That sounds great. Um, it's such a great uh, input and discussion. And I think uh, what's also nice is that uh, representatives from the Historical Association and Bellhaven Action are in the in the gallery, in the audience, uh, mm -hmm. to kind of hear that. Um, I know that they've uh, been very deep into the planning for um, the, uh, you know, the unveiling event. And certainly they are the, the leads on, on this whole project. So, um, you know, we will support um, them in, in making the event really great. And I think some really excellent ideas have been brought up here for them to consider. So thank you for that. And we'll definitely report back in May with, we'll, I'm sure there will be more firm plans by the May meeting as far as like what the event will entail and all of those things. So uh, all that's fantastic. Thank you. And um, I guess also so that, um, might it be possible to, to invite some of the former commissioners that were involved um, when we were first reviewing and approving the dedication and had those meetings, because there were some there that I think that would be great for them is to kind of see, to continue their involvement. Christopher, you get it. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get Christopher in there for sure. <laughs> Maybe We'll Mary definitely Ann. do that. We'll definitely mm -hmm. make sure that those invitations go out. That being said, um, also on the calendar, I noticed commissioner's report, Jennifer Johnson is for June. Um, I, and if anyone would like to um, do a commissioner report or is overdue, happy for you to fill in. I'm also happy to fill in for it because I think it's been some time since I've done a commissioner report as well. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to open it up to anyone who'd like to report. Well, I guess I'll take it as a placeholder unless we get someone new. <laughs> the event. And does anyone else have any um, sort of amendments or thoughts on the calendar, at least the upcoming May meeting? I think it's, it's quite hard. Some of these unscheduled future events, I think we're just waiting to see a lot of these we placed down there just to see what um, updates we may or may not have from staff and city council. Um, so we didn't want to put anything there that was preempting those meetings or those info sessions. I guess we can wait till the next agenda meeting for that. Um, moving on. 
we have commissioner reports. Commissioner Diepenbrock, would you like to share your report with us? Um, hi, hi everybody. Um, well, like we talked about uh, last meeting, um, you know, obviously these reports can take many different forms and, uh, you know, it's uh, still kind of a fairly uh, new commissioner. It's just still trying to figure out exactly how we, you know, propose ideas and, and then get things, get things done. Um, but, you know, from my perspective, you know, as far as our duties on the commission, um, you know, I just look at, at it as, you know, we have incredible facilities here in Menlo Park and, um, you know, lots of unbelievable opportunities for people to get out and use them. And um, one other thought that I was thinking that might help people get out and use one of our parks is, uh, is the uh, Sharon Hills Park there um, off of Valparaiso. Um, it's not, you know, your typical park. It's a, it's a large space. It's got a lot of land. It's, um, you know, not real refined. And one thing that I was thinking that would be a good idea is to put a certain amount of uh, disc golf holes there. Um, and again, my idea is that, you know, it, it's not something that requires really any maintenance when it, when it, once it's done. Um, it is a very, very popular sport. People don't know that they would like it unless they, tr until they try it. So I don't think that, you know, we could have a, a meeting and put it on the agenda and get a bunch of people clamoring to, to play, you know, frisbee golf, but I just think, you know, the different parks that I visit in Menlo Park, that's one I, I use quite a bit and, and walk by, and and I just think it would be a great opportunity to utilize a space, get people to utilize a space. It's a it's a really great way to get people out, um, exercising. They kind of you end up hiking, you end up you know, being outdoors and you're getting a lot of good exercise when you're really not even thinking about it because you're, you know, throwing a Frisbee and, and trying to have a little competition and, and get the Frisbee in the, uh, in the hole there or in the basket. So um, that was a thought I had, um, you know, just a, another way to get people outside and another way to maybe enhance uh, one of our parks, one of our facilities that, uh, like I said, wouldn't really take any maintenance at all. Once it, you know, the initial cost might be, you know, three or four thousand dollars to put, I don't know, six or nine holes, something like that. Um, and it'd be kind of a cool thing to have. So that's my thought for today. Uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Mm -hmm. Uh, Commissioner Deeper Brock, thank you very much for that report and for the suggestion. And it makes me uh, think that perhaps on the tentative agenda, maybe under unscheduled, uh, we could bring forward sort of a report on the uh, Bedwell Bayfront uh, Park Master Plan. And there has been some activity there related to the, the, the marshlands. Um, so it seems like I'm not sure when's the last time the commission received kind of an update on the Bedwell Bayfront Park Master Plan, but this kind of prompts um, that maybe uh, one, one would be good to have in the next, uh, in an upcoming meeting. So if, if it meets the agreement of, of the commission, we, we can park that on unscheduled items and try to get it on the calendar in the next agenda planning meeting with the chair. That, that makes sense, that would be great. And I, I guess um, I, I like where, I do pre I, I always appreciate um, Peter your viewpoints um, because you always do bring about. I mean, I know you're a big fan of pickleball and this disc golf and just um, bringing about things that are healthy and athletic and using our space outside, which I think is really important. Um, so I guess just for for my education and for the rest of us, Peter brings forth an idea, and I you know we haven't taken a park tour in well over a year, definitely because of the environment. Um, how would we go about kind of assessing what something like that would cost and 
take and need so that we could discuss it and maybe something like that could um could come through like what would what would it take uh, certainly the first step would be agendizing it uh just you know for like brown act purposes um so that you can kind of have the discussion where there had been you know public notice uh, you know in advance per the provisions of the brown act so i think that would be the first step um from a staff perspective i would certainly recommend reviewing like the existing a master plan that, that's why I made the mm -hmm. suggestion because you know there mm -hmm. is kind of a document there and then uh, certainly the commission you know your role is to advise uh, the city council uh, on matters kind of related to, to parks and recreation so you certainly it's certainly within your wheelhouse to kind of look at some of these issues you know uh, oftentimes it's if, if the council directs or asks the commission to do it but um, certainly things can arise just from you know community members or commissioners who you know, see that, hey, maybe there's a need here. Can we kind of bring this up and, and, and discuss it? So um, I think that that's the, the process generally, and it would start with agendizing the item. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jennifer. Thanks. So I think, so, so saying, putting back the master plan kind of update and refreshment discussion would then lead us into how can we incorporate an idea like this into the plan? And yeah, I would say I would say that's the typical okay. sort of governance process, you know, for for an advisory board. You know, ultimately, the city council or, or deciders on on, on matters mm -hmm. related to city resources like that. But that that's the process that would typically take. Okay, so that's helpful then for my understanding. So that you know, if it makes sense to just put that in unscheduled, and if we have the um, right time in May to kind of review that, then this way. Um, we can kind of have the discussion and put it in there. Cause I, I, for one, definitely need a refresher on where we stand with things, especially if we're going to be able to reactivate a lot of things in June. Also, Thanks when you all. mentioned tours, I was also another thing to look forward to. <laughs> we haven't back. had one in yeah. probably since July of 2019. I think yeah. we normally would do wow. them in July. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was the last one. So another thing, probably when it <laughs> we could schedule again. Well, thank you, Peter. Um, so it, it, with a heavy heart, I have to acknowledge our outgoing commissioners, Christopher, Sarah, and Jennifer Johnson, who um, resigned in in earlier this month. But we absolutely appreciate all that you've done for us and your efforts and your personalities and your charisma. I don't think it's going to be the same without you. And I'd say that there are some very big shoes to fill and we're not exactly sure who's filling them yet. So <laughs> not to mention your backgrounds. Yes. What am I going to do with these backgrounds? <laughs> we, we can provide those. We can provide please. those. Just let us know if you want us to send them around. That's very Please easy. do. Please, I think we please need do. to keep them up. <laughs> Would either of you like to say anything uh, as your last outgoing meeting? Christopher? Well, I, I spoke at the last <laughs> meeting probably too much uh, <laughs> and, and reflected quite a, quite a bit. And um, <clears throat> I think uh, the only thing I could, I could really add is just, uh, it was a pleasure to serve two, to, to serve two terms. It was a surprise to get an email that with a little bit of an extension added, added in. Um, but uh, I, I really have, it, have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed actually the interaction with fellow commissioners and interacting with city staff as well. And I also really appreciated the, um, the good humor, the good nature that, that people brought. Uh, it could just be the, the 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 nature of parks and recreation and community services. It just brings good people together, and 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 that was certainly true of this, and has been true of this commission. That that uh, time and again, when new commissioners come on board, um, they bring new energy, new perspectives, but also um, a desire to do good work and make a positive impact. And that's it's great to interact with people who who bring that. Um, to a commission meeting. 
Yeah, I'll just add, I, you know, I, I really am so grateful for this opportunity and this experience getting to work with so many of you on ideas and approvals and to meet such a broad swath of just exceptional people who really want to make a difference in our community and who are invested in um, what they think will serve, you know, uh, the entire, the entire footprint of Menlo Park. Um, I've learned an incredible amount uh, about our history, um, about inclusion, about children and programs, um, about all abilities. Um, and I strongly would really strongly encourage uh, people to get involved in this process. I think it's a wonderful way to steward what you want to see out of your community and not be dependent or complaining um, when it really is on all of us to advocate for change. Um, that's why I got involved. I'm an activator and I really, um, if I see something that needs to be done, I want to get it done. And so um, to my conversation earlier with the mayor, you know, come in knowing that you can make a difference. You may not see it always immediately like some of us may in sort of the corporate world or even in our own households. But I, I think, you know, to his point, it is important that we get involved otherwise. Um, well, otherwise there's just not a lot of voice to, to use. Um, yeah, stay the course. Um, and, you know, I would also just say that if, if anything, if anything, the pandemic has also told us just how precious our our assets are here in this community. And so, you know, whether it's you know Little League or um, the the you know Menlo Atherton um, Art Center, you know, just the different things that we have here that serve our community, um, pickleball, you know, Bell Bellhaven Pool, we use it all and have you know, throughout my, my children's um, experience growing up and, and certainly ours as, as, as uh, adults. Um, so yeah, thank you just for your continuing resolve to make this a great place for all people and um, a wonderful part of our community. Oh, thank and you I both. will be learning to play pickleball. I promise you, Peter, I will be following up. <laughs> If we I do a pickleball reunion. Yeah, maybe. We'll have a re like, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do without talking about it every couple of weeks. So <laughs> when I, I assure you, I will be following up. <laughs> How about this? If the program becomes a formal place, it has yeah. a formal home here in Menlo Park. Mm -hmm. It will truly deserve a ribbon cutting and a reunion of this. <laughs> no, the ribbon cutting I want to go to is for the bathroom at Willows Park. <laughs> That's the ribbon cutting <laughs> that I want to go to. I hope it'll to. be a roll of toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> it will Thank be you perfect. all. <laughs> Let's not aim too high now. <laughs> Well, thank you again. We appreciate it. Um, we really, really appreciate you all. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, Thanks for, for putting this on the agenda and bringing some closure for, for Sarah and I. And Jennifer for- Oh, and Jennifer too. For all of your efforts. She, this will, it's recorded, so. <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. Uh, so at, we can adjourn the meeting here at no, 818. Um, I'm sorry, Chair Baskin. It looks like oh, there's sorry. a member of the public who has their hand raised. Oh. Maybe make a comment on the uh, outgoing oh. to the outgoing. Oh, committee. fantastic. So good evening again. This is Pamela Jones. And I wish I had spoke before you all told your story, so it would end that way. But I just wanted to acknowledge um, that I see your legacy, a part of your legacy is doing the Parks and Recreation Master Plan and, uh, and what a gift that has been for the city. And, and especially since a significant part was to let us know how old the buildings were we have around here so we could prioritize in a way that made sense. So I just wanna say, I really, really appreciate that piece of your work. So. Um, have a wonderful time. You can come back in what two years? <laughs> Thanks for alerting us to, to that. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm sure they're just gonna be yeah. back. it's always been working. It working with Pamela and Cecilia and the entire team has been just 
delightful. It's really <laughs> wonderful. Peter, do you have something to add as well? Yeah, I just wanted to say to both Sarah and Christopher, I mean, again, you know, being on this committee for about 10 or 11 months, um, I, you know, and not knowing what to expect, I just could not possibly be more impressed with both of you and just your thought process, your questions and your comments. And you just both have gotten me to think about so many different things that I would not have thought of. And uh, we were, we will really be hard pressed to fill both your shoes. Really appreciate uh, your passion and, and all that both of you have done. I've, I've learned a lot from both of you. So I, I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. Yeah. I'll second that. It's been tremendous guidance from both of you. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Mark. Absolutely agree. Yeah. You guys will certainly be missed. Thanks, Dan. It looks like we do not have other public comments. So uh, at 820, meeting adjourned. Bye. Bye. Thanks to everyone. Thanks, everybody. Day.